and they journeyed from Bethel. And there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died, and was buried, in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave, that is, the pillar of Rachel's grave, unto this day. The kingdom of darkness is always trying to find a way to bring division between the Israelites and the Most High. If Satan is successful in causing the Israelites to stray from the protection of the Most High, he gained the ability to take over and manifest his will in our nation. Unfortunately, in this generation, we have many Israelites being manipulated by the kingdom of darkness. They cannot perceive the enemy standing in front of them because the enemy looks just like them. Israelites are accepting doctrines that stems from pulpits of devils. Majority of Israelites cannot differentiate between organizations rooted in wickedness and individuals anointed by the Most High. If they could differentiate, most of these organizations and individuals would not be successful regardless if they sold their soul to Satan. Most Israelites gravitate towards demonic institutions and workers of iniquity. These satanic organizations and workers of iniquity are causing more harm to our nation than good. They are not here to help us, but to increase the sins of Israel. The scripture stated best, a kingdom or a household divided cannot stand. In the past few years, I noticed an increase of abuse towards the daughters of Zion. The abuse has always been there. However, the increase of abuse is coming from our own community. The heathens and deceived Israelites believe the Most High would not fight for the daughters of Zion. If they pay attention, they would realize they are being judged for the mistreatment of the daughters of Zion. Satan has blinded the eyes of the enemies of the daughters of Jerusalem that they cannot see. This is why they make excuses and put all the blame on the black woman. The tribe of Benjamin is a testimony against all who participate in harming the daughters of Zion. Benjamin was the youngest son born to Jacob by Rachel. Rachel died soon after giving birth to Benjamin. Rachel's pregnancy with Benjamin was complicated. Before she died, she named him Benani, which means son of my sorrow. Jacob changed his name to Benjamin, which translates to son of my right hand. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. Israelites, be careful with the names you give your children because a person's name matches their character. You do not want to give your child a name that will haunt your child and you for the rest of your life. For example, you name your child Deceiver. That is asking the spirit of deception to enter and have its way with your child. Isaac and Rebekah named their firstborn son Esau based on his appearance and the youngest son Jacob based on his behavior when he came out of his mother's womb. Jacob was holding on to Esau's heel. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. The name Jacob means supplanter, which translates to the holder of the heel. Later on, the Most High changed Jacob's name to Israel, which means the one who wrestled with the Most High. Benjamin was definitely Jacob's son of his right hand because Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah and the handmaids. Since Joseph and Benjamin are the sons Rachel bore to Jacob, he loved them more. The scriptures reveal to us that Jacob loved Joseph more than his other children. Joseph was the son of his old age. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. When Joseph sent for his family to come and live in the land of Egypt, the scriptures account for Jacob's bloodline. Benjamin descendants were 14 souls in total that entered Egypt. They dwell in the city of Goshen, where the Most High allowed the Israelites to multiply and become a great nation. And the sons of Benjamin were Bela and Bekeir and Ashbel, Gera, 
and Naaman, Ehi, and Rosh, Mupim, and Hupim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel, which were born to Jacob. All the souls were fourteen. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions therein, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. Throughout the scriptures, you do not hear too much about the tribe of Benjamin until the Israelites asked Samuel for a king. The Israelites wanted to have a king over them, just as the heathen nations had kings leading them. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is, Come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of. This same shall reign over my people. The Most High chose Saul from the tribe of Benjamin to be Israel's first king. The Most High informed the Israelites of the consequences of having a man for a king. The Most High prophesied that Saul would be ruthless. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons, and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which ye shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. The Israelites at the time did not care of all the evil the Most High revealed the king they chose would do to them. They wanted to be like everyone else. Through their request of a king, the Israelites reject the Most High as their king in the process. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. The Israelites wanted a king to go out and fight their battles for them. The Most High will alert you beforehand of the consequences pertaining to your situation. The Most High never make the decision for you. Yah allow you to choose. He warns you ahead of time to help you make the right decisions, but he will never violate your will to choose. Yah granted the Israelites their heart desire. The Most High anointed Saul as the Israelite king. Before the kingship transferred to Judah, Benjamin was the tribe chosen to possess the kingship. We learn in the scriptures, Saul sinned against the Most High. He refused to listen to the commands of the Most High. The Most High stripped Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, the kingship, transferred the kingship to the tribe of Judah, to the house of David. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, 
for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Jonathan was Saul's son, and Saul was the Israelites' first king. David and Jonathan made a covenant agreement that proclaimed the house of David is to look out for his house, the tribe of Benjamin. Israelites, this is why the southern kingdom consists of Benjamin and Judah. This is why you always hear of Judah and Benjamin together in the scriptures. Another reason Judah and Benjamin are together, the scepter of rulership was in the house of Benjamin until the Most High transferred the leadership role to Judah, David's descendants. King David married Saul's youngest daughter. This also gave David the right to become king. Wherefore David rose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michael his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. Another reason the kingship was transferred to Judah, when Jacob was on his deathbed, he gathered his sons together and revealed to them what would befall them, and he blessed them. Jacob said to Judah, the kingship would never depart from Judah. The Most High had to fulfill the covenant Jacob made with his children before he died. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. It is Judah's destiny to rule. Benjamin is the smallest tribe in the 12 tribes of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin is not the smallest due to him being the youngest son. Matter of fact, Benjamin had more offspring than Judah and his other brothers when they entered Egypt. The reason Benjamin is the smallest tribe is due to their wickedness towards a daughter of Zion. In today's society, especially in America, we have the no snitching policy in the Israelite community. Any crime committed or any wrongdoing we do to each other, there is an unspoken rule that we are not allowed to reveal what happened and who is the perpetrator. In today's society, there is a lot of victim blaming, especially in the black community. Our behaviors goes hand in hand with our ancestors. We are not to imitate the wickedness our ancestors did that caused our nation's downfall. We are to overcome and do better. The tribe of Benjamin decided that they would not reveal who abused the daughter of Zion, which led the Most High annihilate the entire tribe. Today we have wicked leaders brainwashing the Israelite men to hate the daughters of Zion and they are acting wickedly towards the daughters of Zion. To the point they wish death upon the daughters of Jerusalem. If you have an ear to hear, men of Israel, let them hear. And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came into Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine, to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me, and beset the house round about upon me by night, and thought to have slain me, and my concubine have they forced, that she is dead. And I took my concubine, and cut her in pieces, and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. A Levite was passing through the city that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. It was the Israelites' custom to welcome their brethren into their homes. None of the Benjamites offered the Levite a place to stay when the sun went down. A certain man saw the Levite and his daughter and concubine on the street and offered them a place to stay the night. Later on that day, a few men from the tribe of Benjamin came to the man's house wanting to sleep with the Levite. They were homosexuals. The men who offered the Levite shelter for the night and the Levite declined their request. The Levite offered his concubine instead. The Benjamites took the woman and abused her all night. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is come into mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine, them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man 
do not so vile a thing. But the man would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Once the morning came, the wicked men from the tribe of Benjamin let the daughter of Zion go, and she went back to the house where her husband was staying the night. The moment she arrived to the house, she collapsed and died behind the door. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day, and fell down at the door of the man's house, where her lord was, till it was light. And her lord rose up in the morning, and opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up, and got him unto his place. The scripture went on to say no wickedness of that magnitude has ever occurred in Israel. Once the other tribes heard of what took place, they confronted the elders from the tribe of Benjamin. None of the people from the tribe of Benjamin would cooperate. Nobody wanted to reveal who did this wickedness. They were protecting the criminals. The tribe of Benjamin held on to the no snitching policy. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin saying, What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now therefore, Deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death, and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah, to go out to battle against the children of Israel. There is nothing new under the sun. We believe we are unique, but only repeating what our ancestors have done. Due to the elders of the tribe of Benjamin failure to deliver the criminals that abused the daughter of Zion. In addition, Benjamin being bold to fight against their brethren for wanting to purge the evil out of Israel caused the Most High to judge the entire tribe of Benjamin. Before the Israelites attack their brethren, they seek the Most High for counsel. Israelites, it is wise to seek the Most High first before you do anything drastic. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Israelites, the Most High said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The Most High did not give us permission to take matters into our own hands. This is why the elders from the other tribes consulted the Most High first to properly address the matter. It was the Most High that decreed to destroy the tribe of Benjamin. Today we have leaders in the Israelite community taking matters into their own hands. The Most High did not give you permission to attack the daughters of Zion. If you have a problem, you ought to seek the Most High and ask Him to intervene in your situation. It is the Most High that judge and resolve the matter. The scripture said it is through a person's behavior you can influence another, not through physical, sexual, humiliation, and emotional abuse. Do not ever take matters into your own hands. Seek Yah first before you move forward, regardless if it is an in-house battle or outsiders. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about, and chased them, and trod them down with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin eighteen thousand men. All these were men of valor. So that all which fell that day of Benjamin were twenty and five thousand men that drew the sword. All these were men of valor. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword as well the men of every city as the beast and all that came to hand. Also, they set on fire all the cities that they came to. 
When the civil war between the Israelites and the tribe of Benjamin was over, the Most High judged the entire tribe of Benjamin, killing men, women, and children. I am sure those who did not participate in protecting the perpetrators were affected. Many Israelites believe if a person or another congregation they are not affiliated with sin, their iniquity has no effect on them. Open diary is being flagged for the lies and false doctrines other Israelites are putting out there. In addition, the disrespectful behavior towards the heathens and other Israelites causing them to label the awakening as a cult and putting us all in the same box. Many Israelites believe that if they remain silent, they are safe. Just in case you have not noticed, you are in the land of your captivity due to someone else's sin. Many Israelite men get a bad reputation because of the sins of the few undisciplined men. I am sure the Israelite men that stand for the daughters of Zion are feeling the heat because whenever something is said about the rebels among us, they put all of the Israelite males into the same category. My question to you, where are you to correct those undisciplined men? The rebels among us are making a lot of noise. However, your roar needs to overshadow theirs. It is your duty to fix the situation. To gain victory over the kingdom of darkness, you have to submit to your head. I am sure there are plenty of Benjamites that had nothing to do with the wickedness of those men that abused the daughter of Zion. In the Most High's perspective, when one sinned, the entire tribe sinned. If you do not repent, you are just as guilty as the perpetrators. When King David sinned by taking a census, the Most High started killing the Israelites. King David had to repent and take responsibility for his action and said to the Most High, he was the one that sinned, not the people. Let the judgment befall him and his house, not the Israelites. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he smote Israel. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. This is why King David was a great leader. He did not remain silent. David took responsibility for his action. He did not shift blame. As a leader, it is your duty to resolve conflicts of all sorts. The Most High will hold you accountable, men of Israel. It is your role to provide and protect. If we continue in the direction we are in right now, Father, have mercy on us. Israelites, the Most High wiped out the tribe of Benjamin. The few the Most High allowed to live, the other tribes vowed not to give their daughters to the tribe of Benjamin for wives. The escaped individuals had to take daughters from another nation to rebuild the tribe of Benjamin. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpeh, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that the escaped of Benjamin that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go, and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards, and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. This diabolical sin toward the daughter of Zion was so wicked, the Most High almost genocide the tribe of Benjamin. In today's society, this type of sin happens frequently. The tribe of Judah and Benjamin are close. Together they form the southern kingdom of Judah. When the news of what the tribe of Benjamin did towards the daughter of Zion spread throughout the Israelite cities, Judah was first to attack the tribe of Benjamin. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God, and asked counsel of God, and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Today, most people would ignore the situation, act as if they don't see the wickedness in our people. Israelites, it is not an accident there is an increase of police brutality against our people and other forms of violence. That is judgment against the Israelites. Last week, we talked about trials from the kingdom of darkness and discipline from the Most High. 
Most people like to use the curses as an excuse. The curses will overtake wicked Israelites. It is judgment when you see our people being murdered and they have no power to do anything about it. It is judgment when collectively you are at the bottom. It is judgment the Most High allowed the kingdom of darkness to strip you of everything you gain because you choose to forsake your own. We have to learn to resolve dispute and differences of opinion with respect. It does not have to end with violence. After the massacre of the tribe of Benjamin, we never heard of such wickedness of that magnitude towards a daughter of Zion. Israelite women, do not believe the rebels among us trying to devalue your role in this awakening. The Most High loved the daughters of Zion and he will fight for you. When Abraham lied and said Sarah was his sister, the Most High closed the womb of all the women in Abimelech's house until Sarah was returned to Abraham. The Most High threatened Abimelech in a dream, informing him that he was a dead man if he touched Sarah. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. The Most High trusted Rebekah in making sure Isaac blessed Jacob instead of Esau. Daughters of Zion, the Most High is not only the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is also an Elohim of the oppressed, the fatherless, and the widow. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. You have to learn to ask the Most High to plead your case. When you see a rise of attack against you, fight back by attacking the spirit possessing the individual or group. Many of you make the mistake of attacking the person. You will not gain victory when you attack the person, attack the spirit. Daughters of Zion, our man is under heavy witchcraft spells. This is the reason they uplift the enemy and degrade their own. They have picked up where the slave master has left off. Satan have them fighting the wrong opponent. Now that you know what is causing the strife, the Most High gave you, Israelite women, the ability to pray. If you could tap into that power of the praying woman that each and every single one of you have, watch how the Most High will fight for you and plead your case. Understand and know, when you start to fight back, many of our people will fall. It is due to their own wickedness. The scripture said all the Israelites know to do is wickedness. They made a career in iniquity. But my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Satan promote the wicked of our people and oppress the anointed and talented of our people. The heathens worship and serve their God without a problem. Anything their idol God asks of them, they will do. It's about time we serve our Elohim in the spirit and in the truth. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness to control you. In this awakening, you will have to make tough decisions. Standing against your brethren when they are out of order is a decision you will have to make. When you choose to stand with the Most High, He will show Himself strong through you. Do not allow the kingdom of darkness to disable you and silence your voice through emotions. Your silence means consent. Israelite man, do not allow the kingdom of darkness to influence you to reject your helpmeet. This will cause more harm to you than good. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor. Many of you do not have that favor you gain when you work together with the daughters of Zion. Do not let history repeat itself. Learn from the mistake of the tribe of Benjamin. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving on unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love his brethren, be pitiful, be courteous.